cataractcoach.com with a cataract surgery in a patient with keratoconus. How's that going to be different? Let me teach you. First thing is, look at the central cornea light reflex. See those three lights in the center of the cornea? Now when the eye moves, look how the lights get distorted. See how they spread apart there and they're narrower there? That's just a small indication of how irregular this cornea is. This patient's had keratoconus for most of his life. And the cornea is very irregular with a high degree of inferior steepening. This patient has corneal keratometry values that are in the mid-50s, so 54, 55 diopters. When we make our incision, go very peripheral in a thick part of the cornea like this and make it a sufficiently long tunnel length so it seals well. Now we'll do our capsorexis. Now these may also be myopic eyes, larger eyes, larger white to white. Make sure, like we'll do here, measure with those forceps to create a five or five and a half millimeter axis. There's the measurement. Those marks on my forceps are two and a half and five millimeters from the tip. So I know I want to create just about a five millimeter capsorexis. That's very important in this case. Because that's going to hold the lens securely in position. The nucleus you can see there has a central density to it. The central four or five millimeters of that nucleus is quite dense. The peripheral part of the nucleus is not as bad. We'll use bounce salt solution on the blunt can to do some hydro dissection. You'll see the fluid waves go across. There's one fluid wave. Tap the center of the nucleus. Here's another fluid wave. Tap it again, another wave. You definitely want this nucleus to be freely rotating. So once I think I have enough fluid waves here, and to loosen up, we'll use a cannula and let's see, can I rotate it? Yes, it rotates beautifully. Additional dispersive viscoelastic being placed to protect the corneal endothelium. And now we're going to get our phaco probe. We're going to use a high vacuum, high flow setting. So 500 millimeters of mercury, 50 cc's a minute of flow, high enough infusion pressure, as well as uh, about 70% torsional phaco power. Buzz in with the phaco probe, bury our chopper, my usual technique, and... It doesn't chop. The central nucleus is too dense. I'll try again. It won't chop. This is that dense, fibrous type of nucleus where I just can't get the chop to propagate through the whole nucleus. So what we're going to have to do is what I'm doing now, break off little pieces of the peripheral nucleus at a time and emulsify those and then just keep rotating the nucleus around. So again, this I can't get the chop in half. Instead, we'll just break off little segments here of the peripheral lens nucleus. There's a little piece broken off. Take our time, phaco aspirated. Don't need a whole lot of phaco power, though the maximum may be at about 70%. I probably won't use more than 10 or 20%, so very little phaco energy. Again, into the nuclear piece, chop off a little piece of the periphery. There it is, and you just have to take your time with this. And slowly, we'll get the whole nucleus. Now let's talk a little bit about lens calculations. How do you do IOL calcs in a patient with keratoconus? Well, it's easy enough to measure the axial length, but what's tough to measure is the accurate corneal measurement, the corneal power, keratometry, especially in the center of the cornea that the patient's looking through. Yes, there may be a very steep inferior portion, but what's the central portion of the cornea? So for this, I use multiple different measurements. We use our biometer, which measures the corneas forth, we also use the topography, a tomography, autokeratometer. Take as much data as we can get to try to figure out what's the central corneal power. And then when calculating it, tend to use a little bit lower value of the central corneal power. So if many of the devices are, let's say, 55 and one says 52, I may choose the one that says 52. And why is that? By choosing a lower corneal power, will select for a higher power IOL, and the patient's more likely to have a little bit of a myopic outcome. In these eyes, we want a myopic outcome. In fact, in this case, we're aiming for about minus two or minus three diopters of residual postoperative myopia. That way, the patient can go back to his types of contact lenses, these hard lenses that he's worn in the past, and uh, those can be quite successful. Definitely want to avoid if we can, any post-op hyperopia. So taking down the rest of the epinuclear shell, now we're going to use the IA probe to do removal of the cortex material. So taking our time with this, 
removing all the cortex. And then for the lens choice, in here I encourage you to use a monofocal lens and even avoiding a toric lens because usually the degree of astigmatism is very high in these eyes and it's irregular. And remember, if you have a torque lens in the eye and then you're wearing a standard rigid or hard contact lens outside the eye, that hard contact lens will neutralize the corneal astigmatism to a large degree. And now you've unmasked the lenticular astigmatism induced by a torque eye well. And that's why we go non toric Here's the capsular bag being inflated with viscoelastic. We can see we have a nice round capsular axis well centered on the center of the pupil as well as on that light reflex. Here comes our lens loaded into the injector. I'm going to slowly deliver that lens in the capsular bag. And there we go. Rotate the lens till we get it into the appropriate position. And then we'll remove the viscoelastic. Important in these eyes to ensure that the corneal incisions seal very well. If there's any leakage or any doubt, just easier to put in a 10 nylon suture now and then just not worry about it. So there we can see a nice overlap of the optic by the capsorexis. Going underneath the optic now to remove that viscoelastic. Take out the viscoelastic here. And then we're going to wrap the case. So certainly you'll encounter patients with keratoconus and you'll be doing their cataract surgeries. I think the important take home messages are Make your incision in the area where the cornea is thick and stay as peripheral as possible. Make a good long tunnel length. If that incision doesn't seal well at the end of the case, just go ahead and put a suture in. Make sure you have a nice round capsorexis like this that overlaps the optic 360. That's going to help a lot to keep the lens stable. For the lens calculations, use a lower K value that you measure for the calculation so that the patient ends up myopic. And certainly always aim to have a little post-op myopia for these patients. And then finally, set realistic expectations. This cataract surgery will certainly fix the cataract, but the patient's definitely going to need to go back to wearing a hard contact lens for optimal vision. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. And check out more videos on cataractcoach.com.